Yeah. We had a quick segment, Drew in the back, and there was a trash can that was being put out with a fire extinguisher, so I'm sure that was a Dexter Loomis reference there. And then Drew comes down to the ring, and he's cutting this promo, and he's talking about Roman Reigns not being there as usual, and how he's going to... It's true, he's got a back injury. It's from, you know, carrying everybody in the back for the past two years, and... I don't know about that. He says, I'm... G- <laughs> I'm going to be the champion, he says, and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to rattle off a list of potential opponents. And the first person he names is Champa, and the people don't care about that one. Then he says AJ, and they kind of pop for that. Seth Rollins, they pop. Karrion Cross, they kind of pop. And finally, was, Kevin it, Owens it, it comes was, out. It was, I thought that like every reaction was similar in the sense that there was a reaction, but it was like none of these matches like made the people go all right, you know, just kind of. They didn't like, see any of them as a dream match. No, not at all. I mean, very much no. It just sounded like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. You know, it was nothing, um, yeah, nothing nothing like, all right, yeah, yeah. And uh, that was kind of like what the crowd was for most of the show, though, really. I mean, they were, they were there, and they were there to have fun. They didn't heckle or nothing. But um, they weren't that enthusiastic, even though they had, their numbers were very big. You know, it was over, probably over... 8,000, maybe 9,000 even, but over eight for sure. And, uh, you know, so, but they they didn't make a lot of noise, especially as the show got, went, went, went on. So Kevin Owens comes out. He's upset that Drew didn't mention him, and he said the difference between you and I is that I know who I am, and you don't know who you are. You got a sword one week. You're doing this and that. And so McIntyre then erupts into this promo talking about how they called him the chosen one 15 years ago he got fired he had to go all over the place and wrestle all over and earn his way back and they called him and he he didn't didn't call call them them. he didn't call them yeah yeah he was about to go to new japan and they found out and it was like uh we better get him because he's good he says i yep i beat brock lesnar i've been champion two times and God damn it, we're two wrestlers out here in this wrestling ring. Let's have a wrestling match. And Owen says, let's do it. This segment was awesome. And then they had a great match. They gave him 15 minutes. And the only downside is the Usos ran in for the DQ. And really, if you look at the whole three-hour show, I think this was the only bullshit finish on the entire show. Yeah, so, and it may, uh, here's the thing. It, given everything... The finish makes sense because, I mean, he couldn't lose. McIntyre couldn't lose. That would be ridiculous, um, you know. And I think that the idea is to keep Owens. You know, again, it's one of those matches where they didn't want to beat either guy. But I think that, you know, because if he beats Owens now, it's kind of like, oh, well, that's really great. Kevin Owens going for the championship, and then he loses his first match. But they've got to do um, – they wanted to keep Owens strong, which is why he gave him the stunner after the match. Um they didn't want McIntyre to claim more him, but they wanted to get the Claymore over, so he ended up doing the Claymore on uh, was it Jimmy Uso, I think. And so it it the finish really, if you look at the big picture, it made sense in in every way. But it's just you know, I mean, it was a DQ finish after a long match that had that w- had gotten very good, and you know, Drew was on the verge of winning, and they protected Owens, and you know, um, that was kind of the deal. Yeah, so it was noted uh, after the match, Owens gave him the stunner, and then he told the Usos, tell your tribal chief he owes me one. So they go after Drew, but he makes his own comeback, hits to Claymore, as noted, runs him off, and tells him he's coming for Roman Reigns on Friday. This segment was great. The whole thing from start to finish. Yeah, yeah, very well done stuff. Yeah, McIntyre really, uh, you know, I mean, Friday too. McIntyre. For a guy with a bad back, this guy is uh, working his ass off. Well, he always works hard. He always works hard. They they gave him the weekend off, but I mean, he still worked. You know, he worked Friday and he worked Monday. You know, in, in matches. Um, you know, plus you're traveling in between. So, I mean, if your back's hurting, I mean, the travels. I don't want to say it's more brutal than the matches, but man, if you're a big dude and you're in cars and you're in airplanes and you're walking through that airport, I mean, that sucks, dude. That's not that's not like a lot of rest. Yeah, no, no, no. He's not getting a lot of rest, even though he's supposed to be resting. He's supposed to be resting in rehab, but he's um, wrestling on TV every week, and he's going to all the um, not all. I don't know if he's going to be. I don't know if he's going to be wrestling this weekend or not. You know, I mean, this weekend. Um, um, but you know, I mean, he'll be obviously he's going to be in Toronto and Mont. I mean, he'll be. I don't know if he's in Toronto. He's going to be in Montreal on on Friday though. So um, 
yeah that's a lot a lot of travel plus he's you know he's doing a lot of uh pr work too you know because um he's been back and forth to scott i mean to uh wales to build for the show and um you know he's kind of like the, the big local star on the show so so yeah it's uh it's tough on healing um when you're not resting um when the best thing to do is rest but he's got uh you know they're trying to trying to build the match and trying to build you know trying to build him up as a as a better contender than all these other contenders that Roman's gone through. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.